headed changes in the mental health code and other areas of uh, legislative importance to the state of Texas. He's authored the 2016 edition of the book, Texas Criminal Procedure and the Offender with Mental Health Illness. Uh, he is uh, the author of an award-winning law review articles focused on mental health and is, uh, also works with our athletic department. It's just a great example of the type of talent we have here at Texas Tech University. Um, next, I want to recognize, and Dr. Skubinek will recognize Mindy Brashear, so I'll, I'll, I won't ask her to stand up at this point in time, but uh, we do, we, we're making a lot of progress with the talent that we have here uh, being sought after by the federal government and to be able to run in different agencies and operations in the federal government. You'll hear about Mindy in just a minute, but uh, uh, she has just been appointed by the Trump, uh, or nominated by, by the Trump uh, administration as the Undersecretary for Food Safety at USDA. That's huge. A uh, huge and a very important position for this country. Uh, Tibor Naj, also the former Vice Pro Provost at Texas Tech uh, and the former Ambassador to Ethiopia and Guinea, and, and has been recently tapped to be the Assistant Secretary of State of African Affairs as well. And then I remind you, last summer, uh, Brandon Lips, who was with our office and Chief of Staff, is now the Chief Administrator for the uh, Food and Nutrition uh, for the USDA, which is probably one of the most significant positions over at USDA. So tech people are doing great things and I think representing our institution very well. Finally, um, Mike Sanders. We all know Mike has been around for a long time. Mike is not here today. Uh, he's probably not here because he's too modest to be recognized, but uh, Mike has worked at Texas Tech in the system for nearly 50 years. He came to Texas Tech as a law student in 1968 and graduated early and was among the first graduating class in 1970. He began his career at Texas Tech as an assistant professor in business and then it went on to establish a private law practice. I think he did a little time with the former Chancellor Hintz as well in his law practice. In 75, he started his longstanding work as in governmental relations for Texas Tech. That was when Bill Parsley was still around. In 1996, he became the first vice chancellor for governmental relations when the system was formed and that was a position he served in until 2013. Mike played an instrumental role in the formal establishment of the system by the state in 1999, and most recently, he's been our senior advisor for governmental relations. Mike is quick to give credit to others, but he has been instrumental in our growth and success in the legislative process across the system. He's devoted his life to our students and institutions. He has been a hallmark of the system since we were founded, and at Texas Tech, 20 years before. Uh, we're intensely grateful to Mike. I personally am. Mike was kind of a, when I started in the legislature, he was kind of a mentor uh, to me. Uh, and Mike had, had a way of not mincing words. He was, uh, but he knew the history and knows the history of a lot of the things that have happened at Texas Tech University uh, through the legislative process and here on campus. And uh, he'll be missed in retirement, but I hope he keeps his cell phone on because we'll certainly be calling him for advice. Um, so uh, Mike has retired as of, I think the last of this, or the first of June, and uh, we wish him well, and uh, we uh, want to honor him uh, with for his past service to Texas Tech. That concludes my remarks. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, the first person I'd like to introduce is Dr. Mindy Bashirs. Uh, Dr. Bashirs is a professor of food microbiology and food safety in the Department of Animal and Food Sciences the Texas Tech University College of Agriculture Sciences and Natural Resources. Uh, as Chancellor Duncan just mentioned, President Donald Trump has recently named her, nominated her to be the next USDA Undersecretary for Food Safety. She's also a, a member of the National Academy of Inventors in which she's a fellow, and she's a worldwide <laughs> expert in food safety issues, both in pre-harvest and post-harvest environments. She's the director of the International Center for Food Industry Excellence at Texas Tech. Dr. Bashir has actually received her bachelor's degree from Texas Tech University in Food Technology, and in 2016 was named one of the 25 future icons by, by, by National Provisioner, a national publication that focuses on the meat processing profession. Congratulations, Mindy. And 
uh, s speaking of icons, uh, the next person I'd like to introduce is Dr. Bill Dean. Dr. Bill Dean has been the executive director of the Texas Tech Alumni Association for more than 40 years. And he has recently um, uh, retired from that position, but he will continue teaching public relations in the College of Media and Communication. A few weeks ago, at our Length of Service Awards, uh, Dr. Dean was given a 55-year pin. And, um, a very spontaneous standing ovation from all the faculty and staff who were there. And you know, when you can work here for 55 years and you'll still get a standing ovation, that says a lot about you. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a marketing student and baseball player, Bill served as a student body president when he graduated with a bachelor's degree in 1961. He spent uh, six years in the U.S. Army and then worked for the uh, Lubbock Independent School District before returning to Tech to get a master's degree in secondary education. In 1967, Dr. Dean returned to Texas Tech as director of student publications and completed his doctorate in 1971. He has served in numerous roles within the College of Media and Communication and has impacted countless students. And in 2017, the college presented him with its first lifetime service award. Thank you. Dr. Dean. Dr. Skubanek, those were all really nice things to say about Dr. Dean, but I can tell you he can also be meaner than a pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, Wait, were you in, I, I, were you in his class? Clearly, you scrubbed the, the, the notes. Yeah, I'm sure Chancellor Duncan can attest to that. Uh, we just sign this. Real fancy. Can't get into student records. Okay. <laughs> Doctor he thought that uh, he was going to work for Ted in mental health. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Skubinek, I'd, I'd also have to say I, I recently was interviewed in a and it was a podcast. So it was a really long interview, and it was about my time. At, they talked about my time at Tech. And I very quickly began to share the story of when I really felt like my career started to take direction. And it was due to a class that I had with Dr. Dean. And I point to that point in history for me. And one of the things that I said was, not unlike so many students out there that went to tech, where you have given them direction and they point to a time in their career where they had a class or an interface with Dr. Dean and it really gave them direction. So I just want to say thank you. I'm here because of your help and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Esparza. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce uh, the new Dean of the College of Agriculture Sciences and Natural Resources, um, uh, William Bale Brown. Uh, Dr. Brown uh, previously served as the Dean for Research and was the Director of the Agricultural Experiment Station within the Institute of Agriculture at the University of Tennessee. Um, he's an expert in ruminant nutrition and he served as the Chairman of the Budget and Legislative Committee for the Experimental si Station Committee on Policy and is Chairman of the National Research Support Program. Prior to his time at Tennessee, Dr. Brown served as the Assistant Dean for Research and the Assistant Director at the Agricultural Experiment Station at the University of Florida, where he earned his bachelor's degree. He also has a master's degree from the University of Tennessee and a doctorate from the University of Nebraska. And I can say that in the time he's already been on campus, um, he's done a wonderful job of carrying on the traditions and culture of Kasner and uh, connecting with the ex external constituencies that are so important to that college. We're very glad to have you here, Bill. <laughs> Next, I'd like to recognize the Knight Raiders chess program. Um, this is Texas Tech University's award-winning chess team, the Knight Raiders. They have competed in five cons for five consecutive years and eight times overall at the President's Cup at the Marshall Chess Club in New York City. Um, you might recall that our basketball team was in the Elite Eight at Boston, and the very next week, this chess team was in the Final Four in New York City. That's why the basketball team's not here. 
<laughs> well, uh, this year, you can, uh, this year the <laughs> Coach Beard, I didn't mean that. <laughs> this year the team. <laughs> This year, the team plays third of the championship, which is also known as the Final Four. Grandmaster uh, Alex Oneshuk, he serves as the head coach and the program director and has been ranked as one of the top 100 players in the world for the past 20 years and was inducted recently into the U.S. Chess Hall of Fame. That was just this past April. Uh, coach Oneshuk is joined here, here today by members of the chess team, women's international master Irene Andrinko, Women's Candidate Master Claudia Munoz, International Grand Master Andrea uh, Barish Bullets, and International uh, Master Jack Sheptimble, well, sorry, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Sheptimble Lock. Uh, and International Masters Luis Torres. There's a wonderful group of students that do a great job of representing Texas Tech University. Finally, I am very pleased to recognize our spirit squads. Um, and the Texas Tech Spirit Program has a lot to celebrate this year. The Palm Squad won first place in jazz and Palm, and Texas Tech Cheer placed third in co-ed cheer at the 2018 Collegiate Cheer and Dance Championships in Daytona Beach. This is the second consecutive year the Palm Squad has taken the national title for jazz. The all girl cheer squad placed in top four for the second year in a row at the 2018 College Stunt National Championships in Lansing, Michigan, and head coach Bruce Beals was named Coach of the Year. After winning second place in the co-ed partner stunt competition at the 2018 College Cheerleading and Dance Team National Championship, cheerleaders Sabrina Garcia and T.J. Allison were named to the 2018 co-ed U.S. National Team. They went on to win gold with the team at the 2018 International Cheer Union Cheerleading Championships in Orlando. Bruce, Sabrina, and TJ are joined by Palm Squad head coach Aaron Harold, Spirit Program Director Stephanie Rode, and Palm members Alyssa Cisneros, Shannon Rockwell, and Dominic Franco. Congratulations. And that concludes my introductions. Mr. Chairman, I don't have anyone here to introduce, but I want to echo what the uh, Chancellor said about Jared Lujan. We, too, are very proud of him. You know, he's an outstanding track runner at Angelo State, president of SGA, and uh, he's also employed at Angelo State. But I had to come to the Board of Regents meeting to find out that he slipped off from his job and went to Costa Rica. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> When you go out of the country, you're supposed to have president approval. I'm going to go ahead and post approval. It's kind of like getting a name before you get it approved. <laughs> he, he's, following, he's following the lead, so we're going to go with that. But we are extremely proud of him, and I want you to know we, we appreciate it. And uh, he gave us these cups. He's from out in far west Texas. That, you know, that land's so tough out there. Blue quail won't even fly over it. But it, it's a, he's, he's a good man, and we're, we're, luck, we're lucky to have him. We have some young students here today, too. They'll introduce themselves, but we're very proud of them as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Awesome. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I just want to tell Dr. May all that he's doing is following in the, the longstanding ASU tradition. It's easier to ask forgiveness than permission. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Chairman, we have uh, I've got I have several groups that I want to introduce. The first, if you look at the monitor, on March 18th of this year, uh, on our Amarillo campus on Sunday, we experienced uh, a, a potential nightmare of a disaster when a fire started. Those of you that have been been to the Amarillo campus know that behind the campus is an extremely large area that has had no rain for the longest period of time. Uh, and a fire started back there and quickly just engulfed the entire area. So we have four folks that, that I want to introduce uh, this morning that were, that were instrumental in making sure that those buildings are still standing. The first is Amador Villasenor. Amador, stand up. Okay, so Amador has been with the Health Sciences Center for 20 years. 
he was alerted to the fire because his daughter saw it on social media on Facebook. And this is the power of social media, and this is how the next generation gets all their info. So Amador jumped in his car, headed over there. By this time, the fire department had completely surrounded that area. They actually had fire departments coming in uh, from other cities, including Lubbock. They were up there quarantining this area off. Amador had gone up there so quickly, he did not have his badge. They weren't going to let him through. And when they saw the sticker on his car, he says, I've got to get in there. I've got to get into the campus. They finally let him through. And so he went in to help direct our efforts to make sure that our own property didn't get burned up. Uh, we have Robert Griffin with him. Robert is one of our tradesmen in facilities up at, at the Amarillo campus, and he was listening to the radio, and he heard that tech was on fire. <laughs> <clears throat> he thought, however, on that same day, because Texas Tech was playing Florida in basketball, <laughs> that it was because the basketball team was doing so well, and we did wind up, wind up winning that game 69 to 66. But then when he listened to the news, a little bit further, he realized that, no, they literally meant tech was on fire. So he also uh, hurried up to the campus. We then have a father-son team, Michael and Hunter Corona. Stand up. Uh, Michael started with Texas Tech in 2012 and uh, has been with us. And what happened when, uh, when he found out, it was because his son Hunter uh, had also seen it on social media. So Michael was in the car with his wife, and he jumped the curb to get up there, and his son Hunter is telling him where he needs to go to shut off the water, or, or to turn on the water back behind all the buildings to get the water going everywhere for it. And so Hunter had the opportunity, probably for the first time in his life, to tell his dad exactly what to do and, <laughs> and where to go. And uh, so anyway, these guys represent the, the tip of the spear for a group that when everybody else was running to get away from this, they were all running toward it. And had it not been for the work they did, we really, we literally wouldn't have this. So where's Harry Sly? Harry's back here somewhere? Even with the work they did, it wound up costing us a couple hundred thousand bucks to go through and get everything cleaned out, but the soot that was covering up everything, the smoke that was covering up everything. You can't tell from this perspective, but this is taken from across the Coulter, across the street at uh, Northwest Hospital. The, the smoke was so thick that they were evacuating people across the street from us. So it absolutely covered up everything. But this is the perfect example of the people that we work with that make our job so easy. So I want to recognize these guys. There's also Curtis Sarah, who's not with us today because somebody has to be up there to make sure there's not another fire. <laughs> All right. Uh, we also have our new SGA officers. We have Ms. Brooke Walterscheid. Where's Brooke? Where, where are all the guys? Here we are. All right. Brooke is from Munster, Texas. She must be a hornet, a Munster hornet. Uh, Brooke received her bachelor's degree in cell and molecular biology with highest honors. Uh, as well as her MBA, both from Texas Tech University. She is in her second year of medical school, and she is the incoming president for our SGA. We also have Ms. Elizabeth Cook, who is our new vice president of operations. Uh, Elizabeth is actually from Columbus, Ohio, and she went to TCU undergrad with the get, getting her bachelor's in education, and she's also a second year medical student. We have Jordan McKinney. Where's Jordan? There he is. Uh, Jordan is a second year medical student. He is from San Antonio, Texas. He received his bachelor's in finance from Texas A&M University and came out here and received his master's, his MBA in health organization management from Texas Tech University. He's one of our second year med students. And we don't have with us today Ms. Lisa Bow, who is uh, from Vancouver, British Columbia. She's, uh, in our, she's a second year student in our uh, uh, master's in um, athletic training and she is the vice president of communications and she could not attend because she is visiting family in Japan but one of the points that I want to make to this so you've got Brooke uh, who is from Munster much closer to the DFW area but she's chosen to be out here for school you've got Elizabeth from Columbus Ohio who's in our school out here you've got Jordan from San Antonio 
who went to undergrad at A&M, and you've got Lisa from Vancouver, British Columbia. All of them are in West Texas at our university out here. So we're very, very proud of the folks that we bring in and the legacy that they leave for us. So let's give them a hand. And, uh, and then I, I guess y'all are going to do your talks later, right? Okay. Uh, the, the, the last introduction I have is Mr. Kano McQuinney. Most of you know Kano. Kano is returning home. Uh, Kano grew up in Jamaica, and he came to the United States in 2001 as an international student. Uh, he received his undergraduate education at Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee, where he received his Bachelor of Arts magna cum laude in political science with a minor in international studies in French. And this gets to what you were saying just a while ago, Mr. Sparza. We're all here because of interactions we've had with folks before us. I'm here because somebody told me at one point, son, you need to figure out something else to do. <laughs> and your life just changes after that. Uh, so Kano went from, from Lipscomb to Pepperdine, uh, and at Pepperdine he received his master's in public policy. Uh, Kano was in my office for many years before moving to Missouri, where he went with his wife after she received her doctorate. And uh, so we have been working hard on Kano to bring him back. He's the perfect person in administrative skills, in experience, in personality to pull something like this together and make it work. So we're all happy to have Kano back. And, and Kano's position is what? Say again. Kano's position is what? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> Kano's position could be anything we'd want it to be. He's the executive director of the Texas Tech Mental Health Institute. The Texas go. Tech Mental Health Institute's alive? It is alive. And well. <laughs> Due to persistent badgering from people. <laughs> no. Uh, that's all my introductions, Mr. Chair. The board will continue in open session and meet as a committee of the whole and meeting of the board. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the board meeting held on March 1st and 2nd of 2018? Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It carries. Thank you. We will now consider items as a committee of the whole, and I would ask the vice chairman to preside over the committee of the whole. Regent Lancaster. Mr. Chairman, the item is consideration of the consented agenda items A through N <clears throat> as listed on pages 1 through 24 of the agenda book and the information agenda as listed on pages 25 through 28. Is there any discussion of the items in either the consent or information agendas? As a reminder, if there is any item you would like discussed in further detail or voted on separately from the consent agenda, you may request that that item be moved with the committee of the whole agenda. Hearing nothing, Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the consent agenda and acknowledge its review of the information agenda. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It carries. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, this concludes the items to be considered by the Committee of the Whole at this time. <clears throat> Thank you, Regent Lancaster. The board will continue meeting in open session to consider the reports of the standing committees. Regent Walker, would you present the items considered by the Academic, Clinical, and Student Affairs Committee? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Academic, Clinical, and Student Affairs Committee of the Board met in open session on Thursday, May 17, 2018, to consider items 1 through 11 as presented on pages ACS 1 through ACS 16 of the agenda book. I request that all 11 those items be considered and approved as a group. Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval of the items as presented and I so move. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It carries, thank you. Mr. Chairman, this concludes the report of the Academic, Clinical, and Student Affairs Committee. Regent Long, will you present the items to be considered for action by the Audit Committee? Chairman, the Audit Committee of the Board met in open session on Thursday, May 17, 2018, and considered item one as presented on pages A through one, A1 through A3 of the agenda book. I request the following items be considered and approved. The committee accepted the following report, report on audits. Mr. Chairman, the Audit Committee also convened in the executive session, at which, no, at which time no action items were considered or approved. 
Mr. Chairman, the committee recommends mm. approval of, of, the, of the item as presented, and I so move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, it carries. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, this concludes the report of the Audit Committee. Regent Esparza, will you present items considered for action by the Facilities Committee? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Facilities Committee of the Board met in open session on Thursday, May 17th, 2018, and considered items 1 through 9 as presented on pages F1 through F21 of the agenda. <coughs> I request that the following items be considered and approved as a group. Item 1, ASU, approval of the five-year capital projects plan and authorized submission of the MP1 report. Item 2, TTU, approve the five-year capital projects plan and authorized submission of the MP1 report. Item 3, TTUH. SC, approve the five-year capital projects plan and approve the submission of the MP1 report. Item four, TTU HSC El Paso, approve the five-year capital projects plan and authorize submission of the MP1 report. Item five, TTU SA, approve the five-year capital plan projects, <coughs> projects plan and authorize submission of the MP1 report. Item six, ASU, approve contract amendment for the third party hiring of design professional for renovation of the food service center. Item 7, TTU, authorize award of the construction manager at risk contracts for the Weeks Hall renovation project. Item 8, TTUS, approve amendment to Chapter 8, facilities regents rules regarding a feasibility study option. The committee also accepted the following report. Item 9, TTUS, US, report on facilities, planning, and construction projects. Mr. Chairman, the committee rec recommends approval of the items as presented, and I so move. Mr. Chairman, second. let the record show that Regent Lewis recused himself from item seven. So recognized. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries. Mr. Chairman, that concludes the report of the Facilities Committee. <coughs> Regent Steinmetz, please present the items to be considered for action by the Finance and Administration Committee. Sure, Mr. Chairman, the Finance Administration Committee of the Board met in open session on May 17, 2018 to consider items 1 through, present, 1 through 7 as presented on FA1 through FA10 of the agenda book. I request the following items be considered and approved as a group. Item 1, Angelo State University, authorize the President to execute a contract amendment with the Follett Higher Education uh, Group, Incorporated. Item 2, Texas Tech University, approved budget uh, adjustment for the 2018 Hazelwood distribution. Item three, Texas Tech University approved acceptance of an in-kind gift benefiting Texas Tech University Southwest Collections and Special Collections Library. Item four, Texas Tech Health Science Center authorized the president to execute a contract with a consultant. Item five, Texas Tech University System approved the 2019 <coughs> premium rates for medical uh, li self, uh, liability self-insurance plan. The committee also accepted the following reports, Texas Tech University System Report on IT Security and Texas Tech uh, Report on Endowments. Mr. Chairman, the committee recommends approval of the items as presented and I so move. Do we hear a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It carries, thank you. We will continue meeting as a committee of the whole and meeting of the board. Ben, please present the schedule for upcoming meetings. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, You've been provided previously a copy of the proposed schedule of board meetings in 2019. That includes setting dates for four of the board meetings with the dates of the October 2019 meeting to be determined later. So uh, if there's no objection, we'll proceed with this schedule. Any comments? All right. Today, the Chancellor and the Presidents of the institutions will not be presenting reports. However, we would like to hear from our student government presidents. Shauna Mullen, will you like to start us off with the SGA report from Angelo State University? Hello. This one? All right. Wow. Okay, so I'm Shana Mullen. You know, I watched Tristan and Emily come up here and give their reports, and they're always a little nervous, and I was like, ah, it doesn't seem that bad, and now I'm up here, and I totally get it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I am Shana Mullen. I will be a senior next year at Angelo State University, and I will serve as the 90th session president. I have with me today the previous president from the 89th session, Emily Hecox, our secretary, Casey Smith, and one of our senators, Nick Lambert. So those are our student representatives for ASU that are here at today's meeting. Okay. Oh, I think this is on. I'm not sure. I don't know how to 
go to the next one. They're, com they're coming to the rescue. Hold on. We had the same <laughs> Thank problem. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, All right. inside there. <laughs> <laughs> Happened yesterday, too, the chancellor, so don't worry about it. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, all good. And we have a new IT guy, is that right? <laughs> so just to go over a few things that happened in the 89th session um, we got filtered water fountain stations uh, on ASU at a few buildings and we're hoping to expand that project during this session um, this was a goal of ours for the students it was really the students really wanted to see it to reduce um, them having to buy a bunch of a bunch of plastic water bottles and cases and cases upon them that they just stick in their dorms and this allowed for them to just walk out and just refill whatever jug they have, and it was really helpful for the students. We also hosted a night walk um, where members of the student government and Dr. Flores walked around campus to point out any light fixtures that needed repair or any um, dark spots on campus that we felt like needed to be lit. Um, our student discount program has over a hundred businesses on it now. Um, it's just local businesses around uh, San Angelo now offer discounts to ASU students and that's a project that our PR committee has been working on and we're really proud of it for how much it's expanded. Um, we've also had an end of the year 5K um, to help promote health and wellness for our students here on campus and that ended up being a very big success. Um, one of my favorite events, the Rammies, was a huge success this year, and that's just recognizing all the successes of all of the student organizations on campus, and you're going to see a couple pictures from that on the next slide. And there's a lot more that happened during the 89th session, but this is just a brief overview. We also had a couple of guest speakers, which was really exciting. Our, my vice president, uh, Brayden Woods, who cannot be with us today because he's actually interning in D.C. for Mike Conway's office. But he's real big into um, getting students politically involved, um, especially since uh, we are the future um, for the United States. So he was able to get the state senator, Kel Seliger, to come visit our campus. He's the chairman for the Committee of Higher Education for the state of Texas, and that was really awesome. Um, he got to sit down and with the executive officers and members of the administration and have a dinner with us and then come to our uh, meeting for student government and answer any of the questions that our students have involving <coughs> higher education in the state of Texas. And then also we teamed up with the Political Science Association, which is a nonpartisan student organization that we have on campus, and Beto O'Rourke actually reached out um, during his campaign wanting to host a town hall in San Angelo and answer any questions that any of the students or members of the community had in, regard, in regards to his campaign and then the state uh, and then the senator elections. And we ended up having over 300 people attend that town hall and it was very last minute. So that was pretty successful in my opinion and that was really exciting and I know Braden was super proud of that event as well. Um, we're also looking towards getting more guest speakers to come to ASU and kind of branch out and get the students more involved. So here are a couple pictures. Um, you can see Kel Seliger right there. Um, these are all three of him. He got to tour our new nursing building and see all of the new tech that's gone in with that because that's um, a project that we're really proud of at ASU. He got to talk to our student government and then there are all of our executives. And then we got to take a picture with him. And then you can go to the next one. Um, up there on the left, you can see uh, Beto O'Rourke and the Political Science Association and a couple members from SGA um, during the town <coughs> hall. And then these other two pictures are us dressed up for the Rammies and how big of a success that was. And we were super excited for that. Okay. So for the 90th session, my biggest goal is to focus on the students because I really feel like any successful campus um, and anything like that really comes from the heart of the students and how they feel about campus and their school spirit. So um, I understand that uh, improving school spirit and really making sure that students feel at home on campus is what's going to help with recruitment, it's what's going to help with retention, it's going to help with um, student success. So that's really my focus that I'm going to be having for this session. Um, my first project is Ram Jam tailgate that we have. Um, everything on campus is great, and, but I always feel like there's room for improvement. There's always room to make anything on campus better, even if it's good and even if it's great. 
So tailgate, I was able to get a members of different student organizations, Greek Life, ROTC, AMOS, all of these um, student organizations and have a round table with the Alumni Center and kind of give them student feedback as to what they would like to see um, improved at tailgate because it's a huge recruitment opportunity for student organizations. And if we're able to get tailgate even better than it was last year and we're gonna able to ramp up the school spirit, we'll see higher attendance at sporting events, we'll see um, uh, more RAM pride throughout the community, and it's just really a project that we're focusing on. This bicycle rental that you can see up there on the second bullet is a project run by one of our graduate senators that she sees um, going around at other universities. We have a huge um, international student population at ASU, and um, so what she's working on is focusing on getting a bike rental for students on campus where they can check out a bike and they can either take it around town or take it around campus for how X amount of time that they would like to. And she has an entire plan already put together and it was really her project. Um, she's not here with us today, but that is Senator Means. And right now it's still in the works, but that is a project that I would like to see started up during my session. Um, one other senator have brought up that the month of November be Veterans Appreciation Month and we're gonna pass a bill at our first Senate meeting um, for every Friday we're gonna do something for our veterans. So that's another project that we're working on. We're gonna expand the water, uh, water fountains. Um, like I said before, we're gonna keep expanding the student discount program. And one of the things that I would like to focus on is getting more of a tradition for our Christmas tree lighting. If you guys have been to that, it's a huge um, success for the community. Lots of people come out to see our Christmas tree lighting but I would like to see Christmas tree, um, not only the Christmas tree lighting, but Christmas lights on our buildings here on campus and get sponsored lights. And then we have a 5K mapped out around campus. So if we could get, um, we're gonna get sponsored lights and then more student organizations involved and have that route lit up, we're gonna have a night 5K at the end of the Christmas tree lighting to just kind of spread Christmas cheer in an ASU tradition. So. That's just a little bit of what we're gonna be doing um, for the student government at ASU. There's gonna be a lot more projects, but thank you guys for listening, and that's all I have. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. Sean Lewis, would you give the report for Texas Tech University? Yes, Sean, sir. before you begin, could I make a comment? Absolutely. You know, if, if I was as thoughtful as Ted Mitchell, I would have recognized you as the new SGA <laughs> president. But um, Sean uh, is replacing Robbie Myers, who did a wonderful job. And Sean was on the leadership of the SGA, and we couldn't be more pleased that you're now the president. Thank you, President Skubinek. I appreciate that. The key word in that, Sean, was if. <laughs> 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 he is in my heart. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chairman Francis, members of the Board of Regents, Chancellor Duncan, President Skubinek, and Provost Gallian, uh, thank you for this opportunity to address you here today. Uh, it is my honor to serve as the student body president for Texas Tech University. So I would like to introduce the new officer team. We have uh, myself, Sean Lewis, well, like I said, I'll serve as student body president. Uh, my external vice president, Jude Al-Hamoud, uh, none of the executive officers could be here today because they're doing internships. Um, Jude is actually in Washington, D.C., preparing for an internship with the White House. Um, and then Amber Ackley will serve as internal vice president where she's in the DFW area working for a construction management company. And John Getz is the graduate vice president. He served last year, ran for re-election, and he will be doing an internship in Chicago with EY. And they will be here at the next board meeting to introduce uh, them to you all. So just a few of our initiatives that we plan on focusing for this year uh, is working with Dr. Offerman on the issue of undergraduate research. Um, when we think of undergraduate re research, a lot at the uh, undergraduate level, we think of test tubes and lab coats. And we'd like to change that notion to get service learning incorporated in the classroom and outside of the classroom, both on Texas Tech's campus and the city of Lubbock and fostering a strong partnership between all of those, uh, all of those groups. The, the issue of mental health awareness that President Mitchell and Regent Hammonds has, has talked about, um, we're, we're, we would like to focus on that a great deal this, this, uh, this term, particularly as it pertains to our graduate students. A lot of them have a lot on their plate. They don't get paid a lot of money. So if we can find ways that we can alleviate that and provide some uh, just 
overall wellness for our students, uh, that'll be a step in the right direction. So we'll be uh, focusing a lot on that this year and work with Kano as well. Um, the issue of engagement and inclusion for our students, ensuring that every student at Texas Tech University has a seat at the table, and not only that, but that their voice will be heard at the table. So that is working with our administrators to get out into the community of Texas Tech and ensure that we're actively engaging with our student body and hearing their concerns and taking that in and providing a, a positive step forward uh, that would improve Texas Tech University and the system as a whole. Uh, transportation services, we're proud to say that we uh, work with City Bus to get bus tracking implemented and that is now live for our students so they no longer have to wait outside in the unpredictable Lubbock weather uh, at the bus shelters. They can see exactly when their bus is coming so they can walk from their apartment complex right out to the bus when it pulls up and they can make their way onto campus without being drenched or have dust from our wonderful haboobs uh, here in Lubbock. And um, as well, we are uh, looking to get a uh, bike rack and bikes, uh, bike sharing system on our campus. And this will not only help um, all students, but particularly our international students who use bicycles to get around um, as well. And then the uh, Zipcar service. So Zipcar, if you don't know, is a way that students can share cars and really people in the Lubbock community can share vehicles. Um, it'll be parked at a dormitory somewhere else on campus and you can go check that car out, use it for a day, a couple of hours. Um, and this is a way to alleviate the struggle that some students may have. They don't have a vehicle and they can get around Lubbock, uh, the city of Lubbock to get their needs done. And um, as this is the legislative year for the state of Texas, uh, the Student Government Association is looking to work with uh, uh, Vice Chancellor Martha Brown um, and Jennifer Brown on the subject of uh, tax-free textbooks. Um, sometimes when you have a textbook that's uh, $3,000 or uh, even a couple hundred dollars, the tax on that is a week's worth of groceries for a lot of students. So working with the state legislator uh, in the, the system to alleviate that and uh, keep more money in our students' pockets. And also we have the privilege of hosting Big 12 on the Hill for all of the universities in the Big 12. We're very excited about that. Um, and we will go to Washington, D.C. to advocate for policies that will not only enhance Texas Tech University, but it will enhance the Big 12 as a whole. Um, last year we went and we hosted the Big 12 conference here in Lubbock at our university. So the, the rite of passage, is, is, if you will, is that you host Big 12 on the Hill. So we'll be working again with uh, Vice Chancellor Brown and Jennifer Brown on this subject and, and coming up with uh, policies, like I said, that will enhance Texas Tech University and the Big 12 as a whole. We're, we're excited and confident to lead that charge in Washington, D.C. And that will conclude my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you for your work on mental health. I urge you when you're in D.C. to seek uh, assistance from every federal official you can talk to about getting funding to support mental health on campus. Absolutely, Regent Hammonds. We'll be sure to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. So, Austin, uh, you want to come up? I don't know if you or Brooke or who, who's going to give the report for our HSC Lubbock. So Brooke is actually going to give the report. I just thought that I would come up here and uh, short and sweet um, say thank you to all of you for this year. Um, I was trying to think of what I wanted to say, but there are very few words that I could say um, that shows how much this position has meant to me this past year. Going to Texas Tech um, during undergrad and then now getting my medical degree from the Health Science Center. Uh, I'm truly proud to be a Red Raider, and I'm truly proud to serve uh, not only the Health Science Center, but this system um, this past year. So I know Brooke is going to do an amazing job. Uh, she's a lot better than me, I promise. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to introduce her. So Brooke Walterscheid, uh, come and give the report. All right, good morning, everyone. So as Austin said, my name is Brooke Walterscheid, and I am honored to be serving the students of the HSC as student body president. So the first thing that I wanted to do is present some of the highlights of our past session um, see where we can go um, going forward. So on the legislative side, we voiced support for the new VA clinic to meet veteran population needs within the Lubbock area. On the operational side, we played an integral role in being fierce advocates for student safety, especially after the events that transpired in this past year. As well, um, we accommodated for student parking needs amongst the vast construction. It's very exciting and luckily, our students have been very flexible and understanding and are really excited to see it all come to fruition. On the scholarship side, we granted over $80,000 worth of scholarships to 105 students through the endowed Phonathon Scholarship, as well as another $2,500 to 25 students through the Double T Scholarship. 
In terms of service, we raised over $1,000 for the Harris County Animal Shelter following Hurricane Harvey. Usually those funds go toward local shelters, but we felt that that entity was more in need at the time. We also met our student fundraising goal of $5,000 loftily set by President Mitchell um, for the Mar March of Dimes. And we also established a permanent partnership with Family Promise Lubbock, providing some much needed continuity and mentorship for the youth that are within that program. In terms of student funding, we allocated over $86,000 to support over 60 student organizations. So I know that President Mitchell already uh, gave a brief introduction of the officers going forward, uh, but I just wanted to rehash that one more time to tell you a little bit more about them and some of their goals for the upcoming year. First, for our Vice President of Communications, we have Lisa Bao. She is a rising second year Master of Athletic Training student. Again, she is from Vancouver, Canada. She loves to play and watch sports, follow the NFL. Uh, she enjoys traveling, as she is in Japan right now, and considers herself to be a big foodie. Her goals for the year include improving both internal and external communication for the organization, increasing student engagement with SGA, as well as enhancing awareness of SGA on campus. Next, we have Vice President of Finance, Jordan McKinney. Jordan is a rising third-year medical student of the class of 2020. He additionally completed a master's in business administration with a concentration in health organization management and is a Lean Six Sigma green belt. So we put the right guy in charge of our money. Um, he is from San Antonio, Texas. When he's not studying for his upcoming board exam, you can find him playing soccer, hiking, and investing. Again, we put the right guy in charge of our money. His goals for the year include increasing organizational transparency, engaging with both the community and the HOC, as well as developing senator's leadership. Next, we have our Vice President of Operations, Elizabeth Cook. Elizabeth is also a rising third-year medical student of the class of 2020. Um, she comes from Columbus, Ohio. When she also isn't studying for her upcoming board exam, you can find her baking, swimming, and traveling. And her goals for the year include making SGA a more visible organization, as well as fostering a positive student learning environment. And again, my name is Brooke Walderscheid. I'm honored to be serving as president. I am just finishing my first year of medical school. I know President Mitchell said that I was a second year, but I've still got two weeks and two more tests to go through until I get to that point. Um, I additionally completed a MBA with STEM concentration here at the Rawls College of Business. I am from the metropolis that is Munster, Texas. Um, for those of you who don't know where that is, um, it's in North Texas, and yes, it's just like the cheese. Um, when I'm not studying, I enjoy hiking, spending time with my family, watching, playing sports, and reading. Some of my goals for the upcoming year include increasing student awareness of SGA. So I want every student on the HSC campus to know what SGA is, excuse me, and what it can do for them. I also want to better demonstrate SGA and HSC offerings to students, whether this is as simple as we have free coffee in the library, or what mental health services can do for them, or what student legal services can do for them. I want students to know that they are supportive, um, supported, and that we have offerings to give them to help them in their success. And lastly, I want to foster a student working environment that is accommodating and inclusive. I want our students to feel that the HSC is the best place for them to grow and to learn and to become their best selves. So that is all I have for you today. I thank you for your time, thank you for your support, and we look forward to get the ball rolling in the next year. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you. Sahid Lilani from HSC El Paso. Uh, Chairman, may I just take a little bit of introducing Absolutely. him? Uh, Sajid comes to us from San Antonio, Texas, where he's the School of Science and Technology. He was a National Merit Scholar finalist. He got his uh, Bachelor of Science degree at the University of Texas in Austin. Came to us where he's joined the class of 2020, getting his MD and his MPH. And like uh, Brooke, his previous uh, uh, introductions, he was also the Vice President of Finance for the Student Government Association last year. He assumes that role as president. We're glad to have him present on behalf of the Health Science Center. Welcome, Sajid. Thank you, Dr. Lang. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, like Dr. Lang said, uh, my name is Saj Milani. I'm a third year at uh, the Paul Foster School of Medicine. Um, first of all, I just want to thank you guys for your time uh, and also for your works for the Texas Tech system. It really means a lot to everybody. There we go. Um, so just want to talk about our last event for the year, this past year, and that was our SGA awards ceremony. Um, and this is just uh, this is our second time having it, and it's just an event where the students can nominate and vote for faculty, um, staff and students at the TTO, a part of, that are part of the TTO, which I see El Paso family, um, that we feel go above and beyond 
um, in terms of uh, helping us succeed. And um, these are actually some uh, recipients. This is Matthew Ramirez, a graduating student from the School of Biomedical Sciences, and Dr. Raj Kumar Lakshmanaswamy, who is the dean of the Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences. And if you haven't heard Dr. Raj's lecture on steroid hormone synthesis, you really haven't heard a lecture on steroid hormone synthesis. <laughs> I'll promise you that much. Um, so in addition to that, we also inducted the new officers for the upcoming year. Um, they're all very dedicated members of the SGA, and I'm very much so looking forward to working with them. Um, so I just wanted to talk about our next big upcoming event, which is the Corazon de Oro, or Heart of, Heart of Gold, uh, Volunteer Day. Um, and this is just a day when uh, students from all three TTU, HAC, El Paso schools um, can come together and give back to the community that really gives our campus life. Um, so this past year we had over two, around 200 volunteers and we're hoping to expand uh, to around 250 volunteers. Um, and just to give you an idea, we volunteer at sites across El Paso, such as the Humane Society, uh, Special Olympics, Salvation Army, uh, Gigi's Playhouse, I think we have the El Pasoans Fighting Hunger Food Bank, uh, Habitat for Humanity. I myself have personally volunteered at the Special Olympics site. We did sports physicals for those athletes and you know, it's, really, it's a really good feeling. Um, and in terms of service, I also wanted to mention that this past year, students just from the Paul Foster School of Medicine gave over 23,000 hours of service back to the El Paso community. Um, and that's from our SCI service learning program, which track those, tracks those hours. Um, and that's not including the nursing or the graduate school. Um, so, you know, that number as a part, uh, in terms of the TTUHAC El Paso campus as a whole, um, is actually probably greater. Um, and for, for me, it's just, uh, you know, we're very proud of the service that we give to the El Paso community. Um, and we hope to continue that excellence and service um, this year and into the future. Um, in terms of the upcoming year, we really want to increase participation and just increase the cohesiveness of the campus. That's really our main goal. I mean, that's what the SG has been trying to do. Um, and so the first thing is uh, we want to increase nursing and graduate school participation in our intramural sports programs. Um, we have, for the past few years, we've had intramural sports programs that are run by students um, at the medical school. And this past year was actually the first year that we incorporated um, the nursing in the graduate school, and so it was a huge success, and we just want to expand upon that. Um, the second thing is uh, we want to implement a new welcome event for the new TTUHSC El Paso students this upcoming year, a sort of supplement to student luncheon. So at the end of last year, some of the uh, senators from the graduate school um, had expressed interest in a college system that we have at the School of Medicine, which is they basically break the school down into four, four small groups, and they compete in service and also in fun events like a field day or something like that. Um, and so they wanted to get involved with that. So we figured why not you know, make an event as part of the SGA um, that we can have everybody come together um, and really you know, have a good time, uh, get to know each other. That way when we have our holiday luncheons, you know, when the, t the whole TTU HSC El Paso campus comes together to celebrate you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, um, everybody is seeing their friends from the other schools that they may not get to see on a day-to-day -day basis and really just foster that sense of community, um, no pun intended. And, um, we also want to expand upon the success of the, uh, our MLK Junior Day of Service. This past year was our first year having that, um, and it was a great success. We want to continue to expand that day um, and hopefully uh, grow it to be as big as the Corazon de Oro Day so we can have you know, two big days of service uh, throughout the year. And then lastly, I just wanted to talk about graduation. Um, tonight is actually the commencement for the uh, Paul Foster School of Medicine. And um, tomorrow are the ceremonies for the School of Nursing and the School of uh, Biome the Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences. Um, and we are very proud of all of our graduates this year. Um, we know that they are all going to go into the healthcare system, and they're going to be leaders, innovators, and the standard of excellence. Um, so this is actually a map of the graduating Paul Foster School of Medicine class, um, and where they are going to be going for residency. Um, and we had a very successful match this year, which for uh, such a young school is very impressive. I mean, we have students doing neurosurgery in Indiana, Washington, D.C., uh, dermatology in San Antonio, ophthalmology in New York, uh, orthopedic surgery in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, ENT in Galveston. I mean, I can go on and on. And then, you know, the most important ones we have, you know, students doing pediatrics, family medicine, and internal medicine here in Lubbock and also at the Amarillo campus. Um, and then we have four students doing um, pediatrics, psychiatry, internal medicine, and emergency medicine. Um, at, the, at the El Paso campus, so they're going to be staying to serve the community there, um, and we're very proud of them. And you know, the success first and foremost goes to the students, 
um, you know, and all their hard work, and also, you know, the faculty and the staff who really help us, you know, for like Dr. Lang, whose, um, you know, leadership and vision for our campus has really been a guiding light, um, and also Dr. Horn, and the, dean of, the, the Dean of Student Affairs, um, you know, in her office, so, um, you know, I, the list would go on and on for all the faculty and staff that really work hard to help us become a great success, and um, we're very proud of our graduates, and uh, we hope you guys are too. And that's it for me, if you guys have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. So before we break for uh, executive session, I'd like to take a moment first to recognize two guests we have in the audience, Tina and Johnny Lujan. They're here today to support their son, uh, Jarrett, who has done really a, an amazing job this past year as our student regent. Traditionally, student regents are some of the most outstanding young people across the state of Texas, and Jared has really raised that bar. He, he has been outstanding this year as we meet not only in front of the dais and, and articulate what is taking place across the campus, but he has really been embedded and has uh, gone to Costa Rica, he's gone around to the various campuses, and when we sit and interact with him as a fellow board member, he has been insightful as to what the student needs are and what is going on. He's been articulate and been able to share that with us uh, and has really brought a level of expertise, engaged expertise, that has served the Texas Tech student body. Uh, Angelo State certainly is proud of, of uh, their favorite son, so to speak. Uh, but you, you've done a tremendous job for us this year. And we, on behalf of the Board of Regents, we want to thank you for your service. I know the governor feels the same way. And so, Jared, thank you so much on behalf of the Board of Regents and all the Texas Tech University system family. It's so in, it's so incredible to me that a, a whole year passed by. You know, <laughs> um, I'm so humbled and grateful for the opportunity that this uh, position has given me um, to be the university system student regent. Uh, on April 26th, I was appointed as a 12th uh, TTU student regent by Governor Abbott and was officially sworn in on August 10th. <coughs> Since then, my life has forever changed, and I truly understand the importance of public education and the difficult decisions that everyone in this room faces every day and managing funding facilities and programs for the benefit of all of our students it's not easy i've watched it all from each one of you from the way you approach situations from your thinking the, the line of your thinking how to debate how to conceive and how to collaborate for the good of the system um, and i'm so proud to be a part of the university of uh, the texas tech university system um, I can tell you that I wouldn't be the leader that I am today without the influence of my family and the community of Marfa, Texas. But I really want to speak to Angelo State University and the significance it's played in my leadership skills. In 2012, I was fortunate enough to be recruited by former ASU track and field head coach and now athletic director James Reed. And mind you, I'm coming from a small West Texas six-man school with no track and a state-of-the-art facility program to being at one of the top facilities uh, in the conference. And there was, uh, there was a big uh, focus on academics. His, his policies was no pass, no play, and Coach Reed made no exceptions at all. Um, student athletes learn how to manage their time more and impor importantly learn that the mind is the most powerful thing. If you set your mind to it, um, you, it your body will adapt to it. Um, he was very supportive of me of being student uh, body president and as being an NCAA, NCAA athlete and was proud that I was one of his athletes as well in that leadership role. Um, I have great friends, but I've truly missed home uh, as a student athlete. Uh, and I stumbled upon the student organization called the Association of Mexican American Students, uh, also referred to as AMAS. Um, there I found students that were really like me. They're first generation students, uh, the same culture, same heritage. We all like the same foods and had the same stories as our Mexican grandmothers of our different healing remedies and all that good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> uh, this organization provided me a sense of home. Uh, and in this organization is where I flourished in my leadership skills, planning events, fundraising, charitable work, and holding an officer position. 
It is in this capacity that I was noticed by Dr. Javier Flores and worked with him on different ASU projects. Um, being an AMAS officer led me to be Student Government Association, where I was a, appointed as a senator, then SGA president, and then ultimately led me to this position here. I tell you this story because you know, probably better than I, the importance that athletics, student organizations, Greek life, programs, departments, professors, coaches, mentors, staffs, and students, um, they're really all important. Uh, you never know where a simple young man from a small West Texas town is going to discover their gifts and talents and what levels they will rise to help others. So if, I can, if you can take anything away from this, please seek to inspire the students around you. Um, I know all of you are extremely busy because you all do such an excellent job, but please take the time to talk to your student leaders and student workers. For me, it all started with a simple, empowering conversation. Once someone told me, you can do this and I believe in you, I became energized and determined. I dreamed of this opportunity and I'm still in awe that I accomplished it. Uh, Angelo State University was a perfect fit for me and I thank God every day for leading me here and placing good influential people in my life like Dr. May, uh, Dr. Javier Flores, Dr. Klingeman, Clint Havens, and Heather Valley Brown. I know all of you know the greatness of Angelo State, but I wanted to, you to hear it directly from me, that I would not be the man I am today without the university um, that it provided me, all the opportunities the university provided me. I'm not only continuing my education and working on my second master's degree, but I am also a full-time employee as a coordinator for multicultural and student activity programs, where I'm fulfilling my dream of helping students achieve their dreams and shaping their leadership skills. I've been able to experience so many amazing things as student regent, and I made it a point at every advantage to take, an, to take another student along with me. The many experience afforded me to this role most students will never experience, which is why I always tried to bring another student along with me, and each student was extremely grateful for this opportunity. I wanted to sincerely thank each, of, each and every one of you in this room for your wisdom, your, guidness, your, your guidance, your kindness, and your mentorship, but most importantly, your friendship. Mr. Chairman and my fellow regents, thank you for welcoming me into your open arms, helping me understand complex business conversations, and including me on topics of, was an incredible experience. Regent Walker, thank you for being my partner in crime <laughs> and always helping me out whenever I need a good explanation or just a good laugh. Uh, Chancellor, sir, uh, you've inspired me to no end. Um, through the many tasks that we ask of you and the day-to-day -day events that you have to go to, I'm humbled to have met such a great man such as yourself. Thank you for always treating me like family. Dr. May, <laughs> there, there's, no, there's no words. Uh, thank you, sir, for guiding me and always being a role model to me. Uh, you are and always have been one of the most inspirational uh, figures in my life, and I strive to one day be half the president that you are. Uh, one of my goals is to one day be in one of your seats, either as a regent, a president, or maybe even chancellor. To the next student regent, as we still don't know, <laughs> uh, you are being welcomed into an amazing system and family and you will do a fine job and everyone here believes in you. And I'm gonna read directly from the paper without looking up at my parents, so that way you don't have to see the ugliness of me cry because I, <laughs> I am an ugly crier. Uh, <laughs> Finally, to my parents, if I could somehow express to you the amount of pride I have for being your son, I hope that this does so. To be able to say that I graduated as a first gen with two degrees and a third on the way, we beat so many statistics against us and our family. You pushed me and pushed me to continue to be a better son, student, athlete, and man. If there's one thing I can tell you is that you have succeeded. You have made me into the man I am today. And although I am not perfect, I believe that you two are that missing perfection in me. You're my rock, my home, and the reason why I get up and fight every morning to make you proud and to show the success of your parenting. In conclusion, uh, I have given each of you a little gift representing the Big Bend area. Um, that's those little cups you see and some of you receive little cookies. Um, those are called bizcochos or ojarascas as we discussed before. <laughs> um, that's an ongoing debate that I have with all my friends. Um, they're from my hometown area and they're also Mexican wedding cookies. I hope that you look at that and you, you think of the Big Bend area and, and all the wonderful students that we have coming from that area um, to higher education. Um, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart and thank you to all my family and friends for their unconditional support. If there's anything that I can ever do for any one of you in this room, please do not hesitate to reach out to me because I'd be glad to help. Thank you so much for this opportunity.
this, if this is the future of America, America's in great hands. Thank you, sir. Well put. All right, uh, the board will now convene in executive session as authorized by sections 551, 071, 072, 073, and 074 of the Texas Government Code.
convene an open session. Mr. Lancaster, please present the motions regarding items discussed in executive session. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, motion number one, uh, to authorize the purchase of improved real property located in El Paso. I move that the board authorize President Lang to conclude the negotiations and execute the purchase documents for the properties in El Paso as identified in executive session under the terms and conditions set forth in executive session. You do them all? You will do them all at one time? I mean, we'll take the individual, I guess. Individual. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. That is my motion. Ah. Is it, second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries. Number two. All right. Motion number two. To approve a transaction with Midland Development Corporation, I move that President Mitchell be authorized to execute an agreement with Midland Development Corporation relating to support of the Texas Tech University Health Science Center Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Program under the terms and conditions set forth in executive session. We have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion number three, to approve a modification of an agreement between TTU TTU, HSC, and University Medical Center, Lubbock. I move that Presidents Mitchell and Skuvenek be authorized to modify the previously approved agreement with University Medical Center of Lubbock relating to the use and maintenance of 10th Street in Lubbock under the terms and conditions set forth in executive session. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries, thank you. Motion number four to ratify the employment contract with the head coach of the TTU women's basketball program. I move that the board ratify the approval of an employment agreement with Marlene Stallings as the head coach of the Texas Tech University Later Raiders program under the terms and conditions set forth in executive session. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion number five to approve the naming of an academic unit of Angelo State University. I move that the board approve the naming of the College of Business at Angelo State University as the Norris Vincent College of Business <laughs> under the terms and conditions set forth in executive session. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And the last motion, motion number six to approve an agreement with the Amarillo Economic Development Corporation. I move that President Skuvenek be authorized to execute an agreement with the Amarillo Economic Development Corporation relating to a school of veterinary medicine under the terms and conditions set forth in executive session. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It passes, thank you. Any announcements at this time? And do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. The meeting of the Board of Regents of the Texas Tech University system stands adjourned. Thank you all.